Hey, today on On The Ropes, I have Michael Campbell at USA Boxing. How are you doing today, I'm sir? I'm doing awesome. Thank, thanks hey. for being here. Thanks for what you're doing. Hey, for those that don't know, uh, explain your role with USA Boxing. Sure. So I started at the local level. I was in the Gulf LBC supporting uh, grassroots boxing. And uh, then I started working national tournaments, and uh, now I've made it my career. I'm, I'm at the national office. I do national events. I put on all the, uh, the national tournaments. I also support the LBCs out in the operations department. Now, someone who's uh, from the DMV, uh, went to Virginia Tech, yep. uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, uh, Physics. Yeah, Geophysics, yeah. Geophysics. How did you make your way into boxing? Oh, thanks for asking. So uh, out of college, I went to, moved to Houston uh, and worked in oil and gas where I found uh, local amateur boxing and uh, a place to give myself, give my service and uh, volunteer. Uh, and, and so that's, that's what I did for about 11 years uh, in the local OVC there, uh, which then led to a position at the National Office. Because uh, even before that time, you actually had a magazine also as well? Yeah, so when I started off in the early 2000s, I uh, started off locally in Houston before I joined the LBC, uh, mostly doing media, fight reports, video interviews, things like this, um, and did a lot of PR and supporting of pro, local pros, and then the Houston Golden Gloves, and then I just progressed to uh, uh, supporting uh, amateur boxing and doing local amateur shows. Now, did you ever think in your wildest dreams when you got your degree <laughs> in geophysics that you'll be doing this? No, absolutely. You know, I always wanted to do a role in sports, and, uh, uh, sports, uh, a career in, in sports uh, media or sports support administration. Uh, so, you know, my career path didn't take me that way through college. Uh, so, you know, I, I got back to it, and uh, now I'm living a dream. I like to say, um, you know, it's very important. You, a lot of times you get advice of, you know, do what you love and you'll never work. Um, and that's the absolute truth. Since I joined USA Boxing, I haven't worked a day yet. Every day is a pleasure. Uh, it's a service. I feel fulfilled. Um, I get to see greatness every day, both in athletic performance, but uh, most importantly in coaches making a difference in, uh, in people's lives, in kids' lives, making a difference in societies and neighborhoods, uh, doing the work, doing the work that society needs. And uh, it's an honor for me to be able, be able to be a part of that and to uh, support it and uh, see it. Uh, prosper, nurturing, to grow the sport. You know, to get those type of positions, do they, USA Boxing, seek you out, or that's something that, that you actually seeked out? The great thing about amateur boxing is it's supported by volunteers. Uh, volunteer officials, all referees and judges volunteer. Uh, LBC leaders are volunteers. And for the most part, uh, coaches and assistant coaches are volunteers. Um, so I was able to uh, volunteer with my service with the LBC, uh, start doing uh, LBC tournaments and bigger shows, and uh, that led to tournament administration. So um, at national, at the national tournament, we'll, we'll bring about 60 um, officials and staff. Again, all volunteers uh, with the local volunteers, and and uh, our entire admin staff uh, is given their own time, given up their vacation, uh, given given up time from work. Um, we support them with a, a sandwich in, in a hotel room and a, and a polo, and uh, and they and they give it and make make it work. Uh, and without them, we couldn't do it. Even our doctors uh, are giving their time and their service. Uh, that's the greatness. Of them. And the, it's, it's amazing to be a part of an organization like this because people recognize um, the impact that boxing has and then they want to give their own service to it. You know, this year we had a major impact with the pandemic and COVID-19. Yeah. You know, that set a lot of uh, things back when it comes to the amateur sports yeah. and boxing. How excited are you to have the national tournament take place uh, in December? This is going to be a monumental event. Um, we've been working since July on Back to Boxing on getting, uh, getting us back in the LBCs at the local level, doing test events, single day sanctions. Um, and we're not even there, we're not even a quarter of the way there yet. So um, we've had about 50 test events so far. Uh, we've learned a lot from them. Uh, I've attended quite a few. Uh, we follow up with all of them. And uh, we're gonna take all that knowledge, we're gonna put that into effect at a much larger scale event at Nationals uh, with four rings and 1,300 boxers. Uh, we're gonna show the local community there, we're going to show other sports, we're going to show uh, the coaches and officials uh, who will take that knowledge back to their LBCs. And most importantly, we're going to show other countries, we're going to show the world how to do this safely, how to give people assurance that boxing can be conducted in a safe manner uh, and keep everybody healthy and 
um, having a sense of responsibility that uh, that they're contributing to this, that they're not contaminating others, that they're not uh, taking sickness back home with them. So it's a very important step towards us getting us back, getting us back to normalcy, and um, just doing it the right way and setting an example. Now, why was it important for you to keep it down in the Louisiana area, even after the devastation that they had as far as the hurricanes? Yeah, so it was very important for us to stay in the state of Louisiana. Uh, last year we took a chance. We went to Lake Charles. It's a little bit uh, lesser known place, a little bit harder to get to. And it was an amazing experience for everybody. Our um, post uh, event surveys produced amazing stories of kinship and friendship that that, uh, that prospered from there. People who had, uh, had, had gone somewhere for the first time with uh, not knowing what to expect and came away with just an amazing sense of hospitality and a great experience. Um, there, uh, the city of Lake Charles uh, welcomed us. Uh, their support was second to none. It was the most amazing financial event for us, uh, as far as financial support and as far as volunteer support and community support. Uh, what happened in uh, when Hurricane Laura hit Lake Charles uh, hit me very hard. It was very personal. Uh, the venue that we did the uh, event in, the Lake Charles Civic Center, has a 20 by 20 foot hole in the, in the roof. All the ceiling tiles are gone. The city, the city was des devastated. Their population is uh, now working to get back. They're cleaning up. And then they were hit by another hurricane. Um, the city of Shreveport stepped forward uh, immediately. We were able to pivot. They were able to give us our same dates, same model, same footprint. To work. So very little disruption to, for our members. Uh, not too far away as far as travel goes. Um, and most of, most of all, with almost as good a, a, a financial situation for us and for our members. So uh, it was very important for us to stay in the state. We didn't want to take that economic impact away. In the city, uh, sorry, the state lieutenant governor's uh, office recognized that as well, and they gave us further support. So it means a lot to me um, as far as the relationships we build, uh, both for me on a civic level, but also for our members um, on a local and a community level, um, and for us to have that um, positive impact on the community to show them what amateur boxing means, what it can, what it can contribute, what it can do. Um, so just very much looking forward to staying down there in the Gulf Coast area and staying in the state of Louisiana. Now, professional boxing last night, uh, for the first time in San Antonio, uh, had crowd control. What are some of the steps that uh, USA Boxing, with their amateur event that will take place in Louisiana, what are some of the steps that they're taking to keep fans uh, safe during that time, and the fighters also as well? Absolutely. So uh, it's going to be 1,300 boxers, another six, 700 coaches and officials and then we're going to have a very limited capacity audience. Uh, each boxer will be allowed one spectator pass for their session only. So what we're going to do is we're going to have separation of different uh, key groups. So spectators will be separate from the coaches and boxers. Coaches and boxers will be separate from the officials and the staff. Uh, within those groups, we're going to create pods, and pods will have very limited crossover. Um, it, it's really up to every individual to protect themselves, to wear proper PEP, to, uh, to respect the virus, to uh, follow procedures that will keep us all safe. Um, we're going to do our best to create one-way traffic, uh, separate entrances for the different groups so that there's very little um, interaction and exposure. Uh, again, so that we can show we can do things safely until uh, this pandemic is eradicated. I, mean, I truly appreciate your time today. Just give the fans the insight and the precautions that are being taken uh, to put on a great amateur event coming up in December. Will this be the largest participation because of the fact that COVID had boxing pretty much shut yep. down as far as the amateurs that everybody's now trying to register? Yeah, Did you have to turn anybody away? Absolutely. So, so not only is it going to be a difficult event as far as new procedures and new processes goes, but also it's going to be our biggest event we've ever done. We have 1,300, currently 1,325 boxers registered, and unfortunately we have about 300 boxers on the wait list to get in. Um, they're, they're, uh, we just can't handle the capacity. Uh, we'll, we'll supplement, we'll do more events, and we'll create our events even larger in the future to try to, uh, to, try to handle that, that many boxers. But you're right. Uh, right now, uh, boxers, it's a year-round sport. And they never stopped training. Uh, they trained however they could in their living rooms and city parks. Uh, got back to the gym when they were allowed to. But uh, boxers have been chomping at the bit since the Western Qualifier was canceled in Reno in, uh, in March. And they're ready to go. And uh, some of those brackets are really stacked. And it's going to be an amazing tournament. Uh, I know you can't show favoritism, but being from the DMV, man, how excited are you to see what Oxen Hill Boxing did to be the number one yeah. gym in the country Absolutely. last year? Coach Darrell, what he's created here is, is amazing. Um, boxing champions at all levels. 
Um, and, and that's kind of what I spoke about earlier. It's about inspiring. The, the little ones inspiring the, the intermediates, and the intermediates uh, inspired by the senior, by the elites. And then even, even at that level, here we had Jamal Harvey, uh, who's trying to attain a spot in the elite team. You know, Keyshawn Davis, arguably one of our top gold medal chances in, in Tokyo, here inspiring uh, him to reach that level. Uh, just the DMV, Virginia, with, with Troy and with Amelia and, and others down here. Uh, 757 is, is uh, blowing up. Uh, you know, it's become a hotbed. Um, so I'm really proud of uh, the success of all the gyms in this area. You know, Oxford had, had two of the under, two of the six under under um, boxes of the year, yep. and three were actually in participation here tonight with the uh, participation of Keyshawn Davis. So that's that's incredible to have well, and, three and in this Sierra, area. And Sierra Martinez, she's a, she's a beast. She's been uh, what I've been here for about two and a half, three years now. Yes, I've been running through every bracket. Uh, it's crushing competition. Uh, you know, one of the best and most rewarding things about me being in this position is to be able to see guys like Makai Fenwick here uh, grow and prosper and get better and better and develop. Uh, sometimes you see that even within a match, a boxer it comes out of the ring a different uh, level boxer than, than, than that for opening bell rang. Uh, but so it, it's amazing to see uh, to see them go from uh, the juniors, the JOs, uh, to the youth and to onto the elite team. You see them develop. Uh, it, that's the most rewarding part about my job. I truly appreciate it.